Now, I was told when I uh, before I came to this church niliambiwa kabla nikuja kwenye kanisa hili that is hard for this church to keep some people ya kwamba watu wengi kanisa hili limewashinda kwa hifadhi that they would go to other churches with sound system manake watu wanaingia na kutorokea kwenye makanisa zingine ambazo ziko na vyombo what i want to say is for a church to grow kile ndaka kunena ni kwamba kanisa lolote kukua or for any ministry to grow ama huduma wote kukunawiri the most important thing is not music cha msingi sio mziki the music can attract people ndio mziki yaweza kuvutia watu the most important thing is that people have this steady relationship with god lakini la muhimu ni kwamba watu wakuwe na mahusiano ya karibu na mungu and they are motivated to follow the plan of god na wachochewe ili kufuata mpango kabambe wa mungu and they enjoy the presence of god na wakasherekee uwepo wa mungu and enjoy serving god na wakasherekee kumtumikia mungu and a group of people serving god together na kikundi cha watu kinachomtumikia mungu pamoja and seeing people changed seeing people changed na watu wanapo kinachoona watu wakibadilika when people see that they can do something to bless other people kama watu wataona kwamba waweza kufanya kitu fulani ili kubariki watu then they will be motivated to stay hapo basi watachochewa kukaa now i in hong kong i train a group of people to serve god with me mimi kule kwetu ninawafundisha watu kumtumikia mungu pamoja nami every week they would minister to some people who come for need kwa hivyo kila ujuma huwa wana wanakabiliana mahitaji ya watu wanaokuja kwa ajili ya kuombea. They've been trained to counsel and to pray for them. Wamefundishwa jinsi ya kuwashauri na jinsi ya kuombea. And they saw people deliver na wa, wameona demons. wameona watu wakifunguliwa kutokana na vifungo vya mapepo or deliver from burden sadness na sadness. wengine ku, kufunguliwa katika mizigo ya hasira and they see that they can serve god na wanaona kwamba wanaweza kumtumia mungu when i'm away they even preach the message hata kwa njia nyingine kuhubiri injili they see that they can do something in the kingdom of god wanaona kwamba wanaweza kufanya kitu katika ufalme wa mungu when people see that their life is fulfilled kama watu wataona kwamba maisha yao yametoshelezwa they have a stronger motivation to stay in a church. Watakuwa na mchocheo mkuu kubaki kanisani. So today I will talk about how to raise up people to serve God. Kwa hivyo leo nitazungumza kuhusu jinsi ya kuwainua watu ili wamtumikie Mungu. Now this is a big topic. Sasa fundisho hili nalo ni mrefu. We won't be able to finish today. Haa tutalemaliza leo. We'll continue tomorrow. Tutaliendeleza kesho. My calling is training people. Mimi mwito wangu ni kuwafundisha watu. And I hope you really listen. Na ninatumai kwamba utasikiliza kwa makini. And attend listen attentively. Ukasikilize kwa uangalifu na kwa umakini. And remember it. Na ukaiweke katika ukumbusho. And use it. Na usumie. And be able to teach other people. Na ukue eh, mwepesi wa kufundisha watu wengine. Now this is very important teaching. Hili ni fundisho la muhimu that you be able to raise up people. Ya kwamba utakuwa na uwezo wa kuinua watu. Now the first point we we'll talk about this morning, cha kwanza ambacho tukizungumzia wakati huu, how to live in the love of God. Tumezungumza kuishi katika upendo wa Mungu. by God's love. Ili tuchochewe na upendo wa Mungu. That's how we can have strength. Hivyo ndivyo tunaweza kuwa na nguvu. Without the love of God, asipokuwa na upendo wa Mungu. Just serving God can be just law kumfanyia Mungu kazi yaweza kuwa ya chini kabisa it becomes work inakuwa ni matendo but when people can enjoy god together lakini kama watu wanaweza kusherekea Mungu pamoja it's not just singing and dancing sio tu kuimba na kucheza now some people sing and dance they feel very good watu wengine wanapoimba na kucheza wanasikia vyema kabisa but they don't know the reason lakini hawajui ni kwa nini the reason that we come to god sababu ya sisi kuja kwa Mungu and enjoy God na kusherekea Mungu so that we are motivated by God ili tuwe tumechochewa na Mungu have a deep relationship with God uko na uhusiano wa kiundani na Mungu and then changed by God na wabadilishwe na Mungu and then have power to serve God na wakuwe na uwezo wa kufanyia Mungu kazi now, sema amen amen now, some people they go to meetings watu wengi huwa wanakuja kwenye mikutano every week they just stands and saying hallelujah eh wanapoenda kwenye mikutano oh, kazi na kucheza na kufurahia na kucheka na kushangilia but the moment the music stops lakini muziki unaposimamishwa 
the enjoyment of God stops. Sasa kule kusherekea kwa Mungu pia kuna kuna simama. And then they wait for next week. Alafu tena wanangoja Jumali Jalo. More music. Eh wakuje tu kwa sababu ya muziki. Because they see music and dancing and joy is the purpose of their Christian relationship. Manake wanaona kwamba muziki kucheza na kufurahia ndio lengo kuu la Mungu. But according to the Bible, lakini kulingana na Biblia, that starts a relationship ule uhusiano mkuu one day we all have to stand in front of god ya kwamba kuna siku moja kila kila mtu atasimama mbele za mungu and give an account of our life na akapeane hesabu ya maisha yake if we have been lazy kama tumekuwa wazembe jesus will say you are lazy wicked and lazy servant yesu atasema kwamba wewe umekuwa mtenda kazi ambaye ni mzembe kabisa our life will be wasted maisha yetu yatakuwa yamesumbuliwa ya, ya But when we enjoy God, lakini unapomsherekea Mungu and have the strong anointing of the Holy Spirit, uwe na upako mkuu wa Mungu and then talk to people and help them, na ukaongee na watu kiwasaidia, and have the strong presence of God, uwe na uwepo wa karibu na Mungu, then we can change people. Hapo tunaweza kubadilisha watu. Then they to say my life is fulfilled. Na sasa utasema kwamba maisha yangu yametoshelezwa. My life is fulfilled. Aya tuseme hivi maisha yangu yametoshelezwa. Maisha yangu yametoshelezwa. I have purpose in my life. Niko na malengo kwenye maisha yangu. Niko na malengo kwenye maisha yangu. I can do something for God. Naweza fanya kitu kwa Mungu. Naweza fanya kitu kwa Mungu. And it will bring blessings to me also. Na italeta baraka kwangu pia. Na italeta baraka kwangu pia. Now, I know my teaching is very different from many teachings you have heard. Najua mafundisho yangu yako tofauti na mafundisho ambayo umekwisha kuyapitia. Now some teachings will make you feel excited. Aha, fundisho zingine zitakufanya uwe umesisimka. But some people may stop there. Lakini eh, inaweza wach... bakia. Inaweza bakia papo hapo. My teaching is not just to excite you. Mafundisho yangu sio tu ya kukusisimua. But to show you way how to continue lakini ni ya kukupea mwelekeo jinsi ya kuendelea. And to be changed by God na ubadilishwe na Mungu. And trained by God na ufundishwe na Mungu. To serve God ili ukamtumikie Mungu. Then you are fruitful. Na hapo sasa utazalisha matunda. But many people have a tendency of being lazy. Lakini watu wengi wako na mazoea ya kuwa wazembe. They like to go to meetings. Wanapenda kwenda kwenye mikutano. And they get excited wanaposisimuliwa and then they feel good wanasikia ni vizuri and it stops there na inaishia hapo sema amen amen but they won't be fruitful lakini sasa watu kama hao hawazai matunda when the church has a purpose to produce fruitful Christians kama kanisa liko na malengo ya kuzalisha wakristayo ambao ni wakuzaa matunda and lead Christians to serve God together na liongoze wakristayo basi kumtumikia Mungu pamoja is joyful to be fruitful ni ya furaha kuwa mtu wa kuzaa matunda when you see people changed unapoona watu wamebadilika is fruitful ni matunda hayo let me ask you wasani kuulize do you want to be fruitful je ungelipenda kuwa mzali Shaji wa matunda amina do you want to be organized and trained to serve god je mungelipenda mkusanywe na mfundishwe jinsi ya kumtumikia mungu yes then you can lead people to christ ili kwamba pia unaweza kuongoza watu kwa kristo yes and build up the spiritual life na ukajenge maisha yao ya kiroho yes and build bring them train them to serve god na pia uwafundishe jinsi ya kumtumikia mungu yes and then they learn to serve god together na sasa wajifundishe kumtumikia mungu pamoja Yes. And see other people changed. Na waone watu wengine pia wamebadilishwa. Then they yes. have the motivation to stay. Na sasa hawa watu watakuwa na mchecheo wa kubaki kanisani. Can you see two different directions? <laughs> Unaona hapa kuna njia mbili tofauti. Some people just want excitement. Watu wengine wanataka tu msisimko and don't look at I have to face God. Don't look at the fact that we have to face God. Na sasa hawatazami huu mtazamo ni lazima tukamtazame Mungu. But if you see that I have to face God, lakini kama uko na mtazamo ni lazima ukamtazame Mungu. And my life can be fruitful na maisha yako yaweza kuwa ya kuzaa. I can bless many people. Naweza kubariki watu wengi. God is very happy with me. Mungu ako na furaha nami. And he bless my life. Na atabariki maisha yangu. That is following the will of God. Huko ndiko kunakoitwa kufuata mapenzi ya Mungu. Can you see the difference? Je, umeona utofauti? 
So if you have this purpose Kama uko na malengo haya of leading people to follow God totally malengo ya kuongoza watu kumfuata Mungu kabisa like myself I try to follow what the Bible teaches kama mimi najaribu kufuata kile ambacho Biblia inafundisha and I found that God's blessings keep coming to me na ninaona baraka za Mungu zikiendelea kunifuata so I hope you have this purpose kwa hivyo pia ninatumaini kwamba utakuwa na malengo kama hayo okay now so this morning I've talked about the live in the love of God Usubuhi wa leo nimeongea kuhusu kuishi katika upendo wa Mungu. To enter God's perfect plan, kuingia katika mpango kabambe wa Mungu. The next thing we need to understand is God has a wonderful plan in our life. Lingine ambalo tunafaa kuelewa ni kwamba Mungu wako na mpango mwema kwenye maisha yetu. Now, one day you go to heaven. Siku moja utaenda kule mbinguni. You found that in heaven there is a book of life. Utapata kwamba kule mbinguni kuna kitabu cha uzima. It's already written for you a plan of God. Tayari imeandikwa juu mpango wa Mungu. And one day you saw that you see the plan na siku moja uliona ule mpango. And you say God I didn't know you have such a wonderful plan. Na utasema kwamba Mungu sikujua kumbe ulikuwa na mpango sawa kama huo. Your plan is that I can be a great person. Kumbe mpango wako ulikuwa ni lazima niwe mtu mkuu. That I can be a great person. Look at me everyone look Aya, at me. Tazameni hapa kila mmoja akatazame ili li jamani. I can be a great person like that. Naweza kuwa mtu mkuu kiasi hicho. But I only live to that amount. Lakini how much? Wewe bali ya kuishi katika maisha ya ukuu hivyo umeishi maisha kama maisha kadogo kiasi hichi. You know, not many people sio watu wote live to the fullness of God's great plan. Ambao wanaishi katika mjalizo wa Mungu wa mpango wote. Do you want to follow God's great plan? Je, ungelipenda kufuata mpango mkuu wa Mungu? Yes. His plan is wonderful. Mpango wake ni wa ajabu. I hope you say if God is full of love, natumai utasema kwamba kama Mungu ako na upendo zaidi, God is full of blessings. Mungu ako na na mpango wa baraka zote. I want to enter God's plan. Nataka niingie katika mpango wa Mungu. Okay, in Psalm 139 verse 16 and 17. Katika kitabu cha Zaburi Zaburi 139 mstari wa 6 hadi 17. Okay, you you can find for him the second part starting with the second part of verse 16. Kitabu ni cha Zaburi 139 All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. Tunasoma kitabu cha Zaburi 39 mstari wa which verse? 139:16 and 17. Mstari wa 16 na mstari maandiko matakatifu ya Mungu yanasema ya kwamba 16. Eh, mstari wa 16. 139 eh, verse 16 17 eh, Zaburi 139 mstari wa 16 inasema macho yako macho yako yaliniona kabla sijakamilika chuoni mwako ziliandikwa zote pia siku zilizoamuriwa kabla hazijawa bado 17 Mungu fikra zako zina dhamani nyingi kwangu jinsi ilivyokuwa jinsi ilivyo kubwa jumla yake Okay. What it says that all the days of our life were written in God's book. Kila kinachofundisha ni kwamba siku zetu zote za maisha zilishaandikwa kwenye kitabu cha Mungu. And in the book is written all the precious thoughts of God. Na kwenye kitabu imeandikwa kwamba mawazo ya thamani ya Mungu. That he has great plans for each one of us. Ya kwamba ako na mipango mikuu kwetu sisi. As I said one day you go to heaven nasema kwamba siku moja utaenda kule mbinguni and you find that God's plan is so wonderful na utapata mpango wa Mungu ni wa ajabu but many people have failed that plan lakini watu wengi wametoka kwenye ule mpango and then he said how come I did, did not live out this plan na atasema kwamba eh ni kwa nini sikuishi kwenye mpango huu because they have not dedicated their life to God manake hawataachilia maisha yao kumuishi kwa Mungu they just live their life following their own will wanaishi tu maisha ya wakifuata nia zao and they lose the plan na wanapoteza mpango pastor deus sema amen amen now in romans 12 1 to 2 katika warumi 12 mstari wa kwanza hadi wa pili find it for for him so that he doesn't can can someone find it for him then he doesn't have 
Fanny quickly. Warumi okay. kumina mili. Mstari mdogo wa kwanza na wa pili. It says, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. Basi ndugu zangu na wasihi kwa huruma zake mungu, itoeni mili yenu iwe thabihu ilio hai katika iliyo hai takatifu ya kumpendeza Mungu ndio ibada yenu yenye maana wala msifuatishe namna ya dunia hii bali mgeuzwe kwa kufanywa upya nia zenu mpate kujua hakika mapenzi ya Mungu yaliyo mema ya kumpendeza na ukamilifu now here it talks about this good perfect and pleasing the will of God. Haya basi hapo inaeleza kuhusu mpango mzuri wa kumpendeza Mungu. God is will, God's will is wonderful. Mpango aha, mapenzi ya Mungu ni ya ajabu. That's how like for instance how God helped Pastor Deus Church to build a Sunday school building. Jinsi vile watu wamemsaidia mchungaji Deus kujenga kujenga ule mjengo ambao utakuwa unahifadhi wale watoto wadogo. When God God's will come to you, kama mapenzi ya Mungu itakujia wewe, you say it's wonderful. Utasema hai ni ajabu. You know, I have seen God's will in work in wonderful uh, you know, in wonderful ways. Mimi nimeshawahi kuona mpango wa Mungu katika njia ya ajabu. I've seen people who are motivated to learn the whole life changed. Nimeona watu ambao walichochewa kujifundisha maisha yao yamebadilika. So I hope you hunger for that perfect will of God. Kwa hivyo nina ninatumainia kwamba utakuwa na njaa ya kutafuta ule mpango kabambe wa Mungu. Because people's will could end up in poverty, difficulties. Manake watu wengi basi wanamalizia katika umaskini na maisha magumu. Why is there so much difficulty in so many places? Kwa nini maeneo mengi kuna maisha magumu zaidi? Because people have not fall, follow the perfect plan of God. Ni kwa sababu watu hawajafuata mpango kabambe wa Mungu. God's perfect plan is up there. Mpango wa Mungu uko pale How can you end the plan? Utaingia vipi kwenye huo mpango? Romans 12 tells us Warumi 12 atuambia Three ways. Vitu tatu. Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Lazima mkajitoe mili zenu zikuwe kama dhabihu. Do not be conformed to the world. Wewe usikumbane na mambo ya ulimwengu. But be transformed by the renewal of the mind. Ukageuzwe mawazo yako yafanywe kuwa mapya. So first is offer our body as a living sacrifice. Ya kwanza ni lazima ukatoe mwili wako uwe dhabihu inayoishi. My body belongs to God. Useme kwamba mwili wangu ni wa Mungu. I want to offer my body to you as a living sacrifice. Na mwili wangu kwako iwe dhabihu iliyo hai. No. I'm already 66 years old. I can retire and stay in Hong Kong. And relax. And to play tennis every day. I can live my life like that. But I choose to write my, my material. I choose to go to difficult countries. Wherever it's open for training. Because I want to prepare people to welcome Jesus. Many Christians are not waiting for Jesus. Some Christians just dance, they like Dancing, but did not change their life. They have not followed God's perfect plan. And some Christians are lazy. And many Christians don't do evangelism. They are not preparing for Jesus' second coming. Do you want to follow Jesus' second coming? Do you want to follow God's will? Ungelipenda kufuata mapensi ya mungu? Okay, let's all stand up. Nataka tusimame wote. Let's stand up. Naomba tusimame. Have an alert mind. Have an alert mind. Alert. Awake. 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 Have a wake. A mind that's awake. Nataka ukue na muamuko wa mawazo. Now the first thing we want to serve God is... Kitu cha kwanza ambacho nataka kumtumikia Mungu. My mind is concentrated in God. Akili zako zote zimemwelekea Mungu. We offer about is a living sacrifice. Unatoa mwili wako kwa dhabihu iliyo hai. Are you willing? 
Je, uko tayari? Wake up your mind and say Ayafungua mawazo yako na useme. I want to follow God totally. Nataka kumfuata Mungu kabisa sema. Nataka kumfuata Mungu kabisa. I want to follow God's perfect plan. Nataka nifuate mpango kabambe wa Mungu. Nataka nifuate mpango kabambe wa Mungu. I want my life to be fruitful. Nataka maisha yangu yazae matunda. Nataka maisha yangu yazae matunda. I don't want to waste my life. Sitaki niharibu muda wangu. Sitaki niharibu muda wangu. Okay, you can sit down now. Haya tunaweza keti chini sasa. Just just now I said the three ways to follow God's plan to enter God's plan. One is offer a body as a living sacrifice. My life belongs to God. When your life belongs to God, God knows you by name. And God will bless you. The reason why many people don't get blessings because they are not seeking the kingdom of God. Okay, the second thing is do not conform to the world. Do not follow the world. The world just wants money or just fun. We don't want to follow the world but Re be renewed by the, you know, renew of the mind. Be transformed, the whole life transformed. I was not like this before I experienced the Holy Spirit. After I experienced the Holy Spirit, every time I pray, I can experience God's love and joy. And when I pray for people, I see people change. And and I said, my life is fruitful. I mean, bring the things. In the past, I just serve in the church. I try to raise up the people in the church. It was difficult. But after it was, I experienced the Holy Spirit, I really dedicated my life to God. I find that my life is very fruitful. I find that I can bless many people. So my life is transformed. Amen. Now your life is very precious. Say to the person next to you, your life is very precious. Your life is very important. You can do great things for God. You will find many blessings in your life. And the way to, to follow God's plan, can you say the three things again? Do you remember? Now say it with the pastor, offer a body as a living sacrifice. Say it. And the second is, do not conform to the world. And number three is, be transformed by the renewal of the mind. So if you are willing to offer your body as a living sacrifice, do not follow the world and be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Yes, I can do great things for God. My life is wonderful. I can bless many people. Today and tomorrow, you still have this evangelistic meeting. You can talk to some people. You can change a life. But not only can you change a life, your life can be changed also. Amen. Amen. Your whole life will be different.
I tell you, my life is very different now. I continue to change people. I continue to bless people. And I thank God for that. Hallelujah. Amen. And I hope you have the faith. My life is great. God is great. He changed my life. He has a wonderful plan in my life. My life can go higher and higher. Do you want to follow the perfect plan of God? Yes. We want to raise some people, Christians. Who have a great view of your life. Okay, now. Yes. Okay, so we talk about two points. First point, live in the love of God. Enjoy God's love. Be strengthened by God's love. Every day, God loves me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Cry out together, Hallelujah! Oh, Hallelujah! Yes, oh, 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 Okay, now you can see it. The second part is God is a wonderful plan. Yes, say it. God has a wonderful plan in my life. I can do great things for God. When I follow God's perfect plan, He will bring me all kinds of blessings. Okay, now we go to the third point. We have to take care of different problems in life. Now, this morning we cannot talk about all the problems. We just talk about one problem. Being affected by people. How not to be affected by people. Now, you might be rejoicing in church. Hallelujah! And you are strengthened. And then you go home. And then your family members yell at you. Does it happen, does it happen to you? Yes. And then you go home and you are unhappy. Now you have no strength. Oh, I don't want to pray. 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 I have no strength. God doesn't love me. I wait for next Sunday. And I go to a church and I'll be happy. But when I come home, I'll be unhappy again. But when I come home, I'll be unhappy again. But when I come home, I'll be unhappy again. But when I come home, I'll be unhappy again. But when I come home, I'll be unhappy again. But when I come home, I'll be unhappy again. In order to be able to serve God, to be used by God, if you are affected by people, every week you have no strength. Except when you come to praise and dance, and you have strength. And then you go home, has no more strength. Then your life will be weak. Let me tell you when I experience after experience the Holy Spirit. And I every day I praise God. Ha 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 praise the Lord. And I'm full of joy. And full of strength. One day I call up someone and share with her my experience. But this person doesn't accept the work of the Holy Spirit. And she was 
angry. Yeye alichukia sana kwani anamshuhudia. She said, "Now you have followed this charismatic way." Anasema sasa umefuata hawa rokole wa kupiga kelele hawa. And she doesn't like it. Wala ana mpango kusikia mambo. And she hang up the phone. Akakata na simu. And I felt unhappy. Kwa kweli alijihisi vibaya sana. And then I pray. Akamuomba Mungu. Thank God. Asante Mungu. But I found no joy. Lakini hata furahi kupatikana. And God spoke to me. Mungu akamwambia. You have to take care of this problem. Wewe hili ni tatizo lazima uweze kukabiliana nalo. So I call her up. Akampigia tena simu. And I said, na akasema, If I made you unhappy, I'm sorry. Kama rafiki nimekufanya nimekukosea, naomba unisamehe. Now it was not wrong for me to share with her. Kwamba ilikuwa ni vibaya mtu kwenda kwa yeye, ilikuwa ni vibaya kwenda kumshuhudia. So I cannot say I share with you it was wrong. Kuna yeye akasema kwamba si kwa na kumshuhudia kwamba ni ndicho. But I said to kushuhudia ni kibaya. If I make you unhappy, I'm sorry. Kama nimekufanya wewe uchukie, naomba unisamehe. But she was still angry. Lakini yeye alikuwa na hasira sana. And then she hang up the phone again. Akakata simu tena. And then I said I've taken care of the problem already. Yeye yeah, akasema yeah, kwa mimi nimeshajaribu kushughulikia tatizo. I have done my part. Nimeshamaliza sehemu yangu. She's unhappy with this work of God. Kwa sababu yeye yeah, amechukizwa na kazi ya Mungu shida Mungu ndio mpa. Whose problem is it? Ni tatizo la nani? Is it her problem or my problem? Ye yeah, baada ya kumshuhudia yeye yeah, ilikuwa tatizo la yule mtu aliyechukia ulikuwa tatizo lake kwenda kumshuhudia. Yeah, yeah. Yet yeah, her problem. Do I have to continue to be unhappy? Je, angeendelea kuchukia kwamba yule mtu amekataa kusikia ushuhuda wake? I said I don't have to be unhappy because of her. And I, I said I already tried to take care of the problem. Nasema mimi nimejaribu kufanya shughuli ile kwa So let go. Sasa yeye achana na yaka yake. And then I praise the Lord. Akaanza kumsifu Mungu asema asante na furahi karudi ndani yake. Sema amen. Spoke to me. Mungu akasema naye. From now on is there is any problem. Mungu kuanzia sasa na kuendelea kama kuna tatizo. Take care of it like this. Wewe mwenyewe inahitajika utufanye mfumbuzi wake. So when I have to apologize I apologize. Anapohitaji kumuomba msamaha lazima aombe msamaha. Even if I have a little wrong, hata kama amefanya kosa kidogo tu. I still apologize. Lazima aombe msamaha. Now in this case I was I did not do anything wrong. Katika hali hiyo ya ushuhuda wala hakuwa ametenda jambo lolote baya. But I just said if I made you unhappy Lakini ibidi amwambie kama nimekukosea naomba unisamehe. And then if it's someone's else fault, hata pia kama nimekakuwa ni matatizo ya mtu mwingine. Do I have to carry her burden? Je, angechukua mzigo wa ile maneno ya ile mtu kwamba amemkosea? Do I have to be unhappy for her? Je, angeendelea kuendea tu kuwa na kukosa furaha kwa sababu ya mtu alimshuhudia kakataa? I don't have to carry other people's burden. Wala hakuhitaji kubeba matatizo ya ile mtu akaachana naye. I can just let go. And I can rejoice in the Lord. Na kusema asante Mungu kwa wema wako. Now this is what God has taught me. Hiki ndicho Mungu alichomwambia. Basically it is Jambo la msingi ni hili. Don't eat garbage. Usile takataka. Do you eat garbage? Je, timu nakula takataka? Do you Do you get garbage and eat? Mnakula taka mnakusanya huko mauchafu kama hata ambao yamepika hayo mnaanza kula? No. Now the Bible says all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Watu wote wametenda dhambi na kupunguka utukufu wa Mungu. Have you noticed all people sin? Mesha nimegundua kwamba kila mtu hapa ni mtenda dhambi? Yes. Okay, now when they sin and they, they and then they say bad, uh, they say bad things to you. Watu wakitenda dhambi na kusema maneno mabaya dhidi yako. So this is garbage. Huo ni uchafu wa utaka. Now the person is not garbage. Yeye mtu aliyesema aliyekukosea sio takataka. But what they say Lakini maneno wanayotoa katika vinywa vyao because it's sinful words. Kwa sababu ni maneno yanayochafua au ni dhambi. Do we have to take it? Je, lazima yale maneno aliyosema juu yako yachukue? When people say you are useless, watu wakisema wewe ni waovyo wa ufai, do I have to eat it? Je, unatakana yale maneno yameze kwamba ni kweli wewe ufai? Do I have to fight back? Je, inahitajika uweze kulipiza kisasi? And say no. I'm not useless. Kwamba mimi wana sio waovyo. You are useless. Wewe ndio waovyo. Do we have to fight back? Je, inabidi mtu akwambie akwambie wewe ni waovyo na umjibu kwamba na wewe ni waovyo? No. no. We don't, right? Atupasi kabisa. Now, it's that simple. Yes. Don't eat garbage. Usire uchafu. Good things from God. Vitu vizuri kutoka kwa Mungu. Good words from people. Maneno mazuri kutoka kwa watu. Good action of people. Matendo mazuri ya watu. We can take those. 
tunachukua hayo but bad words lakini mambo mabaya matusi we don't have to take it hatu tusiachukue kamo amen it's that amen. simple ni vyepesi sana hivyo i'm going to tell you how anataka kufundishe jinsi gani psalm 11846 zaburi 118 mstari wa 6 the lord is with me i will not be afraid what can mere mortals what can people do to me bwana akiwa upande wangu ni nini kitakacho nitenganisha so Zaburi ni moja kumi na nane msali wa sita. So the Lord is with me. He helps me. Bwana yuko papa moja na ami. Ana nisaidia. Almighty God helps me. Oh mungu wangu ana nisaidia. I will not be afraid. Sita ugopa kitu kamu. What can people do to me? Watu watanitenda nini? Let me ask you this question. Oja ni wambie ni olize swari hili. Have you found many people have the habit of yelling at people? Mesha tambua kwa mba watu wengi wanatabia kutukana tukana watu? Do you have you met people like that? Mesha kutana na watu wa hivyo? They get angry easily? Yani kuna watu ambo umesha kutana watu ambo wanachukia tu haraka? Now why do they get angry? Ni kwa nini wanachukia haraka? Why do they yell at people? Kwa nini wanapenda kutukana watu? Is it because of God's work? Yoni kwa sababu yoni kazi ya Mungu. Is it because of God's work? Yoni kwa sababu yoni kwa sababu ya kazi ya Mungu. What's the reason? What's the cause? Sababu ya kufanya hivyo ni nini? The cause is sin. Sababu ya kufanya hivyo ni dhambi. Now, let me ask you, everyone look here. Hebu kila mmoja angalie huko. Some people are more serious in sins, right? Watu wengi wanatenda dhambi na dhambi na dhambi mpaka zinarundikana gunia. Have you met some people like that? Umeshao na watu wa hivyo? They yell at people more often. Yaani kutukana watu na kuwatusi na kukukashifu ni sehemu ya maisha yao. Do you have some people like that in your family? Umeshao na watu wa hivyo katika familia zetu? Yes. Now some people are less serious. Watu wengine hawana hawako serious. But still they have some problems. Lakini pia wana matatizo. So you have some people who have more sins. Lazima kuna watu ambao wanakuwa na dhambi zaidi. Some people have less sins. Watu wengine wana dhambi kidogo. But they still have sins. Lakini dhambi ni dhambi. Haleluya. So when they say something bad, wanaposema kitu chochote kibaya, I use an illustration. Huwa anatoa mfano. If someone take a part of pupu that you know the dumb kama mtu akichukua mavi ya ngombe au samadi and poor said you akayakoroga vizuri kwenye pipa alafu akakumwagia maji hivi do you like the smell there in that it mkena kule chuni kale smell there kale karufu ka chuni kale mnakapenda hiyo do you like it you don't like it right if someone pours it at you kama mtu anapokumwagia takataka do you say i want it i want it i want it ndio unasema ile harufu ni furaha kwamba mtu amekumwagia mavi ya uchafu unasema yes do you want it? No. no. You, what will you do? Utafanyaje? You run away, right? You run away. Utafanyaje? Unakimbia? If it got on your clothing, what do you do? Kama kikumakia kwenye nguo, unafanyaje? Naitoa. Put it off. Yeah, you take it off and you wash yourself, right? Naitoa, alafu nafua nguo. Now if one person go home, kama mtu mmoja akienda nyumbani, he doesn't take it off. Wala hakutoa ile nguo. He smells it for the whole day. Kila anapotembea ananuka tu ile harufu mbaya. This is terrible. Kila anaponusa ile harufu. Why did he do that to me? Hivi kwa nini amenimwagia mimi? For the whole day he smells. Kwa nini muda wote anatembea ananuka tu? And he did not change your clothes. Na wala ile mtu sipobadisha nguo zako. Next day when he gets up, kesho ukiamka tena. He smells again. Harufu ile bado iko tu kwenye nguo. It's terrible. Yaani inanuka vibaya sana. And a day after that, baada siku hiyo hapo baada hiyo, kila siku utakapoamka harufu iko pale pale. Is there something wrong with this person? Eti je, kuna tatizo na huyu mtu ambaye atakufua nguo na anaendelea kunusa tu harufu? Kuna tatizo au kuna tatizo? Will you do something like that? Je, wewe utafanya hivyo kama mtu amekumwagia uchafu baada ya ufue nguo unaendelea tu kuziona na kuchukia kwa sababu yale mtu? Will you do it like that? No. Utafanya no. hivyo? No. But I tell you. Nataka niwaambie. When it's not done, but people's bad words. Isipokuwa samadi lakini maneno mabaya watu waliokutupia kusema. That God unto us. Mabaya mtema juu dhidi yako. Many people keep smelling the bad words. Watu wengi kutembea na yale maneno mabaya na yaliyosemwa juu yao na kuendea kuyanusa. Why did they say that to me? Kwa nini amenisema mimi ni mjinga? It's terrible. Oh, haya maneno mabaya sana. 
They don't try to forget. How attack you kusame. They think over over Day and night. Ila usiku na mchana wanafikiria. It's like some people. Kama watu wengine. The Bible says read the Bible. Andika anasema soma Biblia and meditate on it day and night. Uweze kutafakari wakati wa mchana na usiku. But some people. Lakini watu wengine. They meditate on the bad words of people. Wao wanatafakari mambo mabaya tu na watu wa matendo mabaya. Day and night. Kila usiku na mchana. Why did he do that to me? Kwani nadi nifanya hivyo? He's a terrible person. Uyo mtu ni mbaya sana talipiza kusasa. I don't like that person. Sipendi uyo mtu. Now, let me ask you, is this wise? Ye, jameni, iyo ni busara? No. But do many people do that? Lakini je, kuna watu wano ufanya hivyo? Yes. Do you do that? Aya, swali sasa, je, na weo unafanya hivyo? No. 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 Think again. Ebu fikiri atena. When some people say some bad things to you, ebu watu ana pokusemia maneno mabaya kuwa. Do you remember it for a long time? Uwa una kumbuka yale maneno yano na weka asira na kisas kwa muda mrefu. And when you think about it, you get angry because of that. Kila una pokumbuka una jawa na asira zidi ya. No. Now we should not. But what I mean. I ask you is, are you affected by what people said? Jeho na atiriwa na maneno ambayo watu ana kusema. What they said to you? Maneno aliyo sema didi ya kuhusu. You say, ah, people don't like me. Oh, ameni sema watu ana nipeni. People hurt me. Oh, ameni umiza. People left the church. Watu ame kimbia kanisani. They don't want to come here anymore. Awata kujia kanisani kama wakina fraka. I'm unhappy. Mi mi sina fraka bisha. Are you affected by people? Unaacha kuomba kwa jiri watu wamekimbia kanisani wamekusana kwa nye familia? No. Now ideally, no. Ukweli ni apana. But remember I first asked you at the beginning? Hakini kumbuka mwanzo ni amekumisa. Do some people make you unhappy? Mamba jie kuna watu ambu wana kufanya wana poteza amana fra. And then you said yes. Muka sema andiyo. Sasa mnaambio ukweli muna sema apana. I'm saying we are all affected by people. Anasema sisi wote tumeathiriwa na watu walio tuzunguka upende usipende. To a certain degree. Kwa kiwango fulani. Some people are affected more. Watu wengi wameathiriwa zaidi. Have you seen someone come to you and say have you seen someone come to you and say, I'm, I'm unhappy, my family members, they treat me like that. Yo mechae kuona mta anakuja kwa kwa analia na sema kwa mba au family, mimi ni na matatizo wa family ya yangu au na tatizo hili na hili. Have you met people like that? Mekutana watu wa hivyo? Yes. Also, are you sometimes affected by your family members? Pia hata na yeye uwa na atiriwa na wana family ya waki. They're not nice to me. Siyo watu wa zuli. I'm unhappy. Oh, ni mechukia sana. Does it happen to you? Inafanyika kwako? Yes. I'm saying it happens to all people. Anasema inafanyika kwa watu. Unless you take care of it. Labda kama utaweza kukabiria na nani. Now I'm going to tell you how. Anaenda to take, kwa, how to take care of it. Anaenda kuambia ni jinsi gani utaweza kukabiria na changamoto hizo. The method is. Njia ni hii. Don't eat garbage. Usile taka. Say it together. Say it together. Pa moja, usile taka. <coughs> usile taka. Now let me use an illustration. Goja atoe mfano hapa. Someone in your family yell at you. Mtu mmoja katika familia yako labda amekutukana na ukatifu. You are useless. Akasema wewe ufai. You are no good. Yaani wala ufai kabisa wao. Are those words good? Eti hayo maneno yanafurahisha. They are not good. Sio mazuri. Do you want to take it? Je, unataka uche uyachukua hayo maneno? No. Okay, now uh, let me show you Chinese Kung Fu. Go, eh, go ja so you ha. try to hit me. Yeah. And then instead of taking it, eh, I don't take it, but I, I do it like this. Sawa, sawa. So I try, try again. Yeah. I try again. Cool. Go, go, like that. Mona. So that way, if it hits you, do you want to take it? I want to take it. No, right? You just go. Masababu kuna ne benda nguvu mi ina bidi bi pangu e bana sasa sifu. Mama bana poku ya kwako ni jukumu la kofanya nini? E sio ya chenge chuo mako na zako sema flana ame ni sema i mekuwa ivi mekuwa ivi am trying to illustrate. Okay, good. Thank you. Thank you. You do like this. So when people say something not nice, ko watu ana pose makitu kichizo kuwa kizuri kuwako. They say you are useless. Wakasema we ufai. I don't have to argue with him. Usianze kubishana na mtu wa namna iyo. I don't have to say no. Usiseme apana. I don't have to fight back. Huitaji kurudisha majibu yake. I don't have to hate him. Huitaji kumchukia yule mtu. 
If I do that, kama akifanya hivyo, I'm affected by that. Yeye tayari unakuwa umeathirika na yale maneno. Now for many people it's like this. Kwa watu wengi someone ni... says something not, not ha, nice. Kama mtu akisema kitu kisicho kwa kitu. I feel reaction. Ma, yani mwitikio wa haraka. One reaction is. Mwitikio wa haraka ni huu. I'm angry at you. Unachukia ni wewe umenifanyia hivyo. I want to hit you back. Unaenda mpigane. And then they yell back. Wakianza kwenda kupigana wanagombana, si ndio jameni? Yeah. As it happened to you? Imefanyika jeu kwa you, you kwa, yell back. Kama mtu anakutukana na ona mtukana it has happened yeah. to all people. Kila mtu ameshafanya. It has happened to me too. Hata pia na yeye mjamaa ameshafanyika. But now I don't want to do that anymore. Lakini sasa ameshajifunza au sasa. Another reaction. Mwitikio wa pili ni He something nice not nice to me. Kama mtu akisema kitu kizuri kwake. And then I say oh, I'm unhappy. Alafu anasema oh mimi sina oh, I'm sad. Oh mimi na huzuni. I'm useless. Mimi sifai. Oh. Anatoa na machozi hivyo. Then he become very unhappy. Yaani anakuwa ana furaha kabisa. And then some people who do this. Watu wengine wanafanya hivi. They remember day and night. Yaani wanashika kisasi hawataki kusambea kila mtu wa night. Kila akitembea anawaza tu huyu alinifanyia. Yaani huyu mtu simpendi kabisa wala kusamea hataki. And then they want to na wanatafuta njia ya kutaka kulipiza. To do something back. Eh hey, wanatafuta njia kuweza kutaka kumlipiza. To repay the person. Kuweza kulipa mabaya kwa baya. Are these good reactions? Je, hayo mambo ni mazuri? No. Has it happened to you? Imeshafanyika kwako mtu akakujeruhi katika kimawazo ukataka kulipiza kisasi? Yes. Now so the way to do it very simple again. Njia ya kufanya ni nyepesi ni hii. Do you remember what I said earlier? Nakumbuka alichosema mwanzoni. Don't eat. Usire nini? Chafu. Mtu akwambia nyoko usimjibu nini? Yo. Na mwambia wabeja sana. So when he said you are useless. Mtu akisema kwamba wewe hufai. Is it the truth? Je, ni ukweli kwamba wewe hufai? No. Do I have to take it seriously? Hayo ni mambo ya kuyachukua? No. No. I don't have to care about it. Hayo wala sio hata mambo ya kuyajali. I don't have to mind it. Yaani upaswe hata kuyafikiria. I don't have to think about it. Yaani wala upaswe kuyawazia kabisa. I don't have to fight back. Wala uhitaji kulipiza tena. But why do people fight back? Kwa nini watu wanalipiza wana kisasi? Because they say kwa sababu wanasema it's unfair. Mambo sio vizuri kumtendea. It is to me. Kwa nini amenifanyia hivi? I have to pay back. Lazima nilipize kisasi. Is unfair. I fight, kabisa. I'm angry. Ni mechuki yuzwa. I cannot let go. Yani swezi kumwacha umtrende hivi hivi tu. When we cannot let go, who will suffer? Tunapokuwa hatuwezi kuwachia mambo ya kaenda ni nani atathirika? Who will suffer? Nana atathirika? We will suffer. Sisi wenyendo atathirika. Sabo maumivu ya kaenda. So the key to that is. Funguo kwa jambo ni hili. If you want to be used by God greatly. Taka utumikuwa na mungu kwa njia kipeke. When people say negative things. Watu wanaposema mambo asidhidi yako. For instance, if he says you are useless, kwa mfano mtu anaposema wewe ni waovyo, then I'll say, well, I'll, I'll try my best to best to improve. Wewe unamwambia kwamba nitajitahidi sasa na mimi niwe mtu mzuri. I will try to do my best. Nitajitahidi na mimi niwe mtu mzuri kama wewe. You can help me. Naomba unisaidie. Instead of being angry, baada ya kuchukia, I can respond in different ways. Unaitika kwa njia hivi kweli hapo kuna ugomvi. Wewe hufai unamwambia nitajitahidi na mimi niwe mzuri. Naomba unisaidie. The, the main thing is the main thing is I don't have to be unhappy. Hapasi kuchukizwa na maneno ya watu because I see that the words have no authority. Kwa sababu maneno yaliyotamkwa yale hayana nguvu yoyote dhidi ya maisha yako. I remember God's word. Kumbuka maneno ya Mungu yanasema. God's word is we are important and precious. Kwa sisi wote Mwenyezi Mungu alituumba tukiwa wazuri sana. Let me tell you a fact. Hoja nikwambie na jambo. God says we are precious. Mungu anasema sisi ni wasamani. And people yell at us and say Ataka, we are useless. Lakini watu wanasema kwetu kwamba sisi hatufai ni waovyo. Which word do people accept easily? Ni maneno gani unayopasa kuyakubali viepesi kwamba wewe ni wasamani au wewe ni waovyo ufai? Which word do people accept? Easily? Maneno ya Mungu, maneno ya watu. Mungu. God's word. Which word? God's word. God's word. Ideally vizuri sana but i found that most people don't really believe they are special lakini watu wengi hawajitambui kwamba ni watu muhimu 
Even after I keep telling them, you're precious. Hata kama anaendelea kukukucha kwamba wewe ni wa muhimu, wewe ni wa muhimu. The next day is oh, a kesho ukikutana hata baada ya soko tuafaa, jamani ni unaanza kulia mtani. Wamenifanyia nini? I'm useless. Wewe oh, wamekimbia kanisa. Oh, I've wame seen many nini. people like that. Ameona watu wengi sana wana namna hii. Most people is hard to remember. Watu wengi ni vigumu sana kukumbuka. I'm precious. Kwamba wao ni wasamani. I'm important. Yeye ni wa I can be happy. Anaweza kuwa na furaha. Most people take people's word easily. Watu wengi wanachukua mambo ya watu wengine vipesi sana. All day long they say. Kwamba wao kila wanapenda. Nobody wanasi. likes me. Hakuna anayenipenda mahali hapa. People reject me. Watu wamenikataa jamii. I'm useless. Oh mimi wamesema ni wa ovyo. Have you seen people like that? Meona watu wa namna hiyo? Yes. <coughs> so I'm saying, kwa yeye anasema hivi. It's hard for people to take God's word. Kama ni vigumu sana watu kushika maneno ya Mungu. And easy for people to take people's word. Ni pesi sana watu kushika maneno ya kushika maneno ya watu wanaosema. So now I'm telling you to do the reverse. Lakini sasa anakufundisha ufanye kinyume naye. Take God's word. Kwamba chukua maneno chukua maneno ya Mungu. Whatever negative words people say. Wakati watu watakapokunenea maovu dhidi yako. It is their problem. Hayo ni matatizo yao. Sema amen. If I'm wrong, kama nimekosa, I say sorry. Nawaambia samahani. And I'll change. Na utabadilika. But if not my fault, lakini kama sio kosa langu, I don't need to be wala sihitaji kutokuwa na furaha kwa sababu ya maneno ya watu. Tusema amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But I tell you, nataka niwaambie, it's not easy. Sio vyepesi. The next time, wakati mwingine, when your family member yell at you, you go home they yell at you utakapokuwa nyumbani mwana familia wako akamkaongea katika mgogoro what is your immediate reaction mwitikio wako haraka ni upi it doesn't matter haijalishi umwambie haijalishi umwambie sio tatizo what you say utambia unaniambia hivi which reaction will you have ya ipi ambayo utatumia ya kwanza ya pili ya kwanza most people the natural reaction is be angry Watu wengi mwitikio wa haraka ni kuchukia. Can you keep telling yourself? Nataka uendelee kujiambia mwenyewe. God loves me. Kwamba Mungu ananipenda. I'm important. Mimi ni wa samani. God is a wonderful plan. Mungu ana mpango mzuri na maisha yangu. The negative words of people are Maneno not. Neno mabaya watu wanaosema bidi yangu sio ya muhimu. Sema amen. Amen. When they say it, wanaposema I don't have to be unhappy. Sihitaji kutofua na furaha kwa ajili ya maneno ya watu. Now this teaching is very simple. Haya mafundisho yanaonekana ni mepesi sana. Don't eat garbage. Usile taka. Mwambie mwenzako usile taka. Usile taka. But it's hard to do. Lakini ni vigumu kufanya. Because why? Kwa nini? Our sinful nature. Kwa sababu ya dhambi tulizo nazo. We are angry. Sisi tunachukia. It's unfair. Haiwezekani bwana. What it did to me, I want to do back. Kwa nini alinifanyia hivi? Lazima nilipize kisasi. Let me ask you. Ngoja niwaambie. Is it true? Je, ni kweli? We yes. have this sinful nature. Kwamba sisi tuna hayo hasa hivyo. We want to pay back. Tunahitaji kulipiza kisasi. The moment you pay back. Unapolipiza kisasi, you lose. Unapoteza. Amen. 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 Let me tell you. Ngoja niwaambie. 1998 I experienced the Holy Spirit. Moja mia tisa sina nane aliweza kuguswa na mguso wa Roho Mtakatifu. God used 10 years to teach me this lesson. Alitumia miaka kumi kuweza kumfundisha somo hili. To teach me this lesson. Kuweza kumfundisha somo hili. I don't have to be affected by Wala haitaji kuathirika na mambo ya watu walio mzunguka. The negative words of people has no power. Maneno ya watu machafu dhidi yako hayana nguvu juu yako. I don't have to take it. Wala upasi kuyachukua tena. Thank you.